Hi, I'm Laura. Welcome to or back to my channel. Let's cut to the chase. I know interviews are hard and they're stressful. The interviewer is staring into your soul, either through the screen or in person. You have to think on the spot, come up with answers that actually make you sound like a good person. And when you don't come up with an answer, you sit and think while the interviewer sits and stares blankly at you too in awkward silence. But what if I told you that there is one easy trick to answer any question and ace it? Well, I kind of be lying, but I do have a couple tips that can help you ace your next interview, whether they be behavioral or technical. So I'll be covering behavioral and technical interviews, where behavioral is more like the tell me about yourself questions, and technical is more on the computer science programming sides of things. So if you're not a computer science major or a computer science student, don't worry, you can still stick around and walk through the behavioral interviews because those are also crucial parts of getting yourself hired and making yourself seem like a great standout candidate. So the first question that I want to cover today is the tell me about yourself question. It was really difficult to craft a solid narrative about myself, nevertheless one that actually sounded natural and true to who I was. So most of the time in an interview, this will be asked as a warm up question. You won't really be penalized for a bad answer because they just want to take this chance to warm you up to more difficult questions or more technical questions. That being said, this question should definitely feel natural and should never catch you off guard because of how common of a question it actually is. I won't dive too much into what your answer should actually look like, but the main idea here is that you want to tell a story about yourself and make it fun. What makes you you? Why are you here? Why are you interviewing with this company? And what might I as the interviewer have in common with you? So interviewers may actually use this as a jumping off point for future questions, such as, Hey, design a product that resonates with one of your hobbies that you mentioned earlier. So I want to break this down into three categories. One is tell a narrative about yourself. Two is be honest. And three is to be casual. So one, tell a narrative about yourself. Take this time to really go beyond the surface level details. They already know that you're a student or looking for a new job because obviously you're interviewing with them and they probably know where you go to school, your grade in school, etc. These kinds of things are very surface level details that don't actually dive too much into who you are. I also want to note that it's important to weave in non-academic or non-work related experiences here. I think it's great if you throw in things about how you volunteer for a camp or some organization or kind of what your hobbies are. These move you beyond statistics on a page and it also helps show your character and what you like to do in your free time outside of coding. As much as there's a narrative around how you have to be coding and programming all the time outside of your academic and work responsibilities, people also really do care about who you are as a real human being. So make it a sticking point to actually share that about yourself. Two, be honest. Obviously do not lie about any of your experiences, hobbies, stuff like that. It can kind of come back to bite you. And if for whatever reason the company or interviewer finds out that you've lied to them, that will basically disqualify you from the job. Three is be casual. Found that if I just treat the interview like a casual experience, it's a lot easier for me to feel connected with the interviewer and also just kind of get some of my points across without feeling too stressed. So question two, explain X technical concept to me. So obviously this one is going to be more geared towards the computer scientists of the world, but an important part of working at a tech company is working with customers who actually have no idea what your product does, how it does it, and why. You may also be working with other non-technical team members who need something explained to them before they do a sales pitch of your product or have a meeting with a customer. Generally, when someone asks you explain X concept to me, their main goal is to see that you're able to move away from technical jargon and explain something in easy, friendly, digestible terms. They also just want to see that you have strong communication skills and you don't kind of crumble under a situation where you can't rely on these technical jargons. The easiest way that I found to move away from these technical concepts is to think about analogies. So while of course everyone will understand to some extent a rephrased explanation that doesn't use technical jargon, relating a technical concept to a common analogy will also just help cement this more in your interviewer's head. So I wanted to just share a quick example here. I heard a really good example for recursion. Pretend you're in a movie theater and you want to find out what row of seats you are. So while you may not know, maybe the row below you knows, but it actually turns out the row below you also doesn't know. So it starts this chain of asking the row below them, hey, what seat row am I actually in? Once you reach the very first row, obviously that they say, hey, I'm in the first row. And so then they'll start relaying back their answers to the row behind them. I also want to note that they may just want to see that you truly understand a term, especially if it's been listed on your resume. So for example, if you're actually a TA for an object oriented programming course, can you explain what polymorphism is? Or if you're a TA for an operating systems class, can you explain race conditions? Question number three, walking through any technical problem. I say technical problem, I'm really pretty much referring 
into a programming exercise. This is going to be a pretty standard part of any technical interview, particularly if you're looking at a software engineering job, but it can also be relevant in other areas such as data science or product management, depending on what kind of skills and background the company is expecting from you. So I'll be specifically talking about programming here, so you can skip to the next question if you're not too interested or this isn't really relevant to you. Trust me, I know that programming questions can be a huge pain for a lot of people, and I've honestly been there too. So let's really figure out how you can ace your next interview and avoid having to solve any more technical questions in the future. At the heart of every programming question is the desire to learn how you think and what your problem solving skills are like in the face of a difficult problem. So yes, you will be expected to have some base knowledge of data structures and algorithms, but it's not like you have to spend hours and hours going through the same leak code question just to ace that one problem during your interview itself. My best strategy here for walking through a programming question is to have a framework in place to help you answer any technical question that you get presented with. If you don't already have a framework, you should. This will prevent you from freezing, save you from jumbling through your answer, and even help you recover if you're having some difficulties getting to the correct answer. Even if you do not solve the problem at hand, you can still demonstrate that you understand how to work through a problem, aka the essential skill of problem solving. A particular note that I want to add here is that if you've seen a question before and you're facing that same question in your interview now, it might be in your best interest to say, hey, I've actually solved this problem before, do you still want me to go through it or should we switch to a different question? Best case scenario is the interviewer will acknowledge and let you complete the question as usual. Worst case is that you've shown your honesty and you also get a better opportunity to demonstrate that you know how to quickly work on your feet and truly problem solve. Here's the bottom line. While optimally you do find the correct solution and the most optimal solution for your programming question, the way that you solve your problem is also really important. If you jump straight from A to B and say, hey, I solved the problem, the interviewer doesn't know, did you actually go through any problem solving steps? Did you already solve the question beforehand? If you're actually walking through the problem step by step and show that you're capable of solid logical reasoning, you have a leg up on a lot of other candidates out there. I'll also be doing a video soon about what framework I used and found worked best, which is a mixture of a few that I've seen floating around. So check that out maybe next week or in two weeks. So question number four, tell me about a situation where X, Y, Z. These are gonna be your general basic behavioral interview questions. These questions will pry into your ability to work effectively in a team, deal with angry customers, or diffuse a misunderstanding between you and your manager. Again, here I'll advocate for the use of frameworks because frameworks are your greatest friend, and there are a couple different methods here to help you structure your answer. The most common ones are STAR or SAR, and I'll put up what they mean on the screen. STAR stands for situation, task, action, result, and SAR stands for situation, action, and result, just cutting out the T. The biggest piece of advice that I want to provide here is that it's about showing, not telling. Set up a quick context, but don't make that context two minutes long. The interviewer really just wants to know about what you did and how your actions ended up saving the team or resolving the tension. Basically, these questions are just how much can you brag about your soft skills and being a superhero. Just kidding, please don't brag, it'll come off as being super egotistical and not humble at all. A really common question that people like to ask is tell me about a time when you had a difficult situation working with a teammate. So here's a bad example. In college, there was a robotics team that I was a part of. I joined freshman year and we were put into groups for this competition that we had. The competition was in March and it was currently October. I was put in a group of people that I don't really know before and then it, yeah. there's a lot of unnecessary background context there and also that can easily be cut down into just two or three sentences. A better version would be in college as a part of my robotics club I was assigned into a group with two other unfamiliar students for this upcoming robotics competition. We cut down a lot of unnecessary filler words and information that the interviewer just really doesn't care about or need to know. So that's the context. The action is going to be pretty similar. You want to just get down to the heart of what you did, what the key tension was, and how you resolve that key tension. With results, the more concrete your result is, the better. If you can add metrics, add metrics, but don't be braggy, just be genuine. So a good example of this is to say, with our previous robotics story, even though I struggled to work cohesively with my teammates, our robot placed fifth in two different categories, and it was also the best rank among my college overall. So if you can move from conflicting teammates to fifth place at an amazing tournament, that means that obviously you have some pretty good confidence like resolution skills and are a great teammate to work with. In essence, you made your team run like a well-oiled engine. Question five, why do you want to work for X company? So this question was one that I really struggled with. How was I supposed to know why I wanted to work for a company that I never worked for before and also a company that I never met anyone
anyone from or step foot in. It really reminded me a lot of the whole college application situation and trying to pander to different colleges, programs, and prestige, etc. So the key difference here for me was instead of spending hours upon hours pouring over a company's website or waiting for two weeks to chat with someone on LinkedIn who worked at that company that I was about to interview within two days, I would actually just wait until the day of the interview to prepare my answer. I know that this seems a little bit risky, but actually I think waiting about an hour or two before the interview is actually the best time to do this kind of preparation. But here's the secret. Go to the company website and just jot down a few notes about specific points from their website. You don't have to always find the most niche topic that says, hey, I scoured for five hours through your website, but rather it's just about finding points that you really connect with. So that can be their products. If they produce great products that you love and enjoy using, that's great. If they create products that are relevant to your hobbies and those in turn are really things that you're interested in working on, then that's also great. Even better, if you do know what team you might specifically be interviewing for, you can dive a little bit more into what that team works on and see if they work in a niche sector and expand on why this company does cool things in that sector. Through this tactic, I've really been able to nail down my why this company answer, and it is truly tailored for each company. I'm not recycling any points like I did in my college essays, which were, by the way, a disaster. It also just really helps because I just spent that time looking at this company's website and any relevant blog posts, so I can easily refer to things that are in my short term memory instead of having to retrieve from my long term memory. Here are some other tips that I found to be really helpful in setting myself apart from some other candidates. Be genuine and authentic. It really only builds up stress and anxieties for you during the interview if you're pretending to be someone that you're not. A good chance is that the interviewer can also tell if you're pretending, so honestly it's just better to be yourself and feel more casual and confident in what you're saying and how you're presenting yourself. Be sure to prepare questions for the interview interview. The interviewer will usually almost reserve 5-10 to 10 minutes for you to ask questions, inquire about the position, ask about life at the company, etc. You don't need, say, 15 questions, but two or three really well thought out prepared questions so interest in the position that you're interviewing for and can also serve to distinguish you from other candidates. On the subject of programming questions, leak code is really not the end-all be-all even though it can feel that way. There are plenty of companies out there that don't ask programming questions in leak code style, so I also have a resource link down below that compiles such companies. Off the top of my head, HubSpot and Etsy are two companies that don't rely on leak code style questions to filter out candidates at the beginning. You also want to be making a note of if you actually want to work with the person interviewing you. This is a common cliche, but you're also interviewing the person and the company while they're interviewing you. They represent the company and there may be some other people that you work with in the future if you were to be hired and working on that team. Take some time to say, hey, do I actually get along with this person and do they get along with me? But most importantly, do not take rejection too harshly. I say this as someone who has been rejected and ghosted by tons and tons of companies, probably more than I can count. Maybe it just wasn't the right fit now. And even if it was your dream job, I promise you, you can still keep applying. And a few years down the line, who knows what'll change. All right, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you'll be able to take some of the tips that I shared today to really boost up your confidence moving into your next interview and even ace it. If you enjoyed this video and want to see similar content, please thumbs up, leave a comment below, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. All right, that's all for now. Bye.